Good morning, hello, good morning. How are you this lovely morning? It's uh, very wet and dewy. <clears throat> Let me just get out on the road. Out on the road again. <laughs> oh. Oh, I had yesterday off. We work three and a half days a week, so we usually have a Wednesday or a Thursday off. Yesterday, it was a Thursday. Let me get the... Need to get the brakes fixed on this car. I think it needs a service. Well, how are you? I hope you're well. I'm very well. I'm being harassed by a patient at the moment. It's, uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's a funny story. I mean, it'd be funny to you. It's not been funny to me. Here's the gist of it. We had, a patient rang up about three weeks ago, or they didn't ring up, they filled in the form. Usually they ring here, ring, and then they told to fill in the online form. So she filled in the online form, so she wanted to register as a new patient. No mention of uh, any toothache or anything. And she wanted to come in at a specific time, which is a Friday morning. So, and today, of course, is a Friday morning. So, and this was the first free Friday morning appointment we had. So, that's the one we gave her. So then, uh, we then uh, invoiced her 78 quid, which is a uh, standard charge for a new patient checkup, including x rays. And um, she didn't pay it until uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, five o'clock was her deadline for paying it. And she tried to pay it online, but she couldn't get her postcode to work, apparently, with the um, online payment thing. So she rang us up and uh, paid over the phone, which is, is somewhat annoying because it actually costs us like it cost us a pound more for her to pay over the phone because she could be using a stolen credit card whereas uh, if she uh, pays online with her phone then uh, it's much less likely that it's, it's a fraudulent transaction and so therefore um so therefore uh, you know we try and avoid paying over the phone if we can but anyway but if someone's like technically a bit incompetent and uh, can't cope with online invoicing then we know you know at the end of the day we'd rather have the money than just give them a two-hour lesson on how to pay an invoice that they don't want to pay online so anyway uh, and she still uh, she got the date wrong for the appointment and so uh, receptionist in addition to taking the money also corrected her about the, the date and time of the appointment so that's Wednesday. So skip forward to Thursday, yesterday. She then rang up, um, and, you know, which again, it's my day off, but it doesn't matter. I don't mind taking phone calls from the odd patient because we get very few of them. In fact, she was the only one yesterday. And uh, she rang up and said, um, she's a bit concerned because she paid the invoice the day before, but she hadn't been given an appointment. So, and it didn't get off to a good start because for the first like 30 seconds or so, she she was just saying, hello. And I was saying, hello, you know, hello, hello, can I help? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. And then we got to a point where she she, she did it for so long that I said to her, look, you know, I was, I was suspecting this was a wind up or something or some, or more likely some cold call, sales call from India. And uh, and so I said, look, if you don't talk to me in five seconds and let me know why you're calling, I'm just, I'm gonna hang up. So then all of a sudden she could hear me then. So she says, she said, well, that would be a bit rude, wouldn't it? If you hung up on people, she said, I, I would have thought as a dental practice, I've got, an, uh, I've got an appointment with you. And I would have thought that if you want customers that you'd be a bit more um, polite to them and your 
PR would be a bit better, she said. So I said, yes, right. I said, I'm sorry, uh, what's the problem? And she said, well, I haven't got an appointment. Now, the best way, the best way to um, uh, identify patients on the system is not to ask their name, especially if they're, because a lot of our patients have got very heavily non-anglicized names and it's very difficult for us to type them in into the surname filter and stuff like that. So we just go by the date of birth. So I said to her, what's, what's your date of birth? And uh, she said, it's the 1st of, uh, of February. And then she said, no, 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 it's not. No, I got that wrong. It's the, um, it's the 1st of September. And then she gave me the year. So I said, all right, leave it with me. I said, I'll look into it and I'll find out what's going on. I'll get back to you. Uh, and so, um, and then, uh, then she hung up on me. So by then, my sort of, you know, well, I have a sort of a, I tried to get a sense of how Looney Tunes the patient is. And my Looney Tunes meter was off the scale at that point. So, anyway, I went to the computer, typed in that date of birth, and, and it came up with a patient who'd like not been in for 16 years and who certainly didn't have an appointment. So I'm thinking, right, okay. She doesn't even know when her own date of birth is. So anyway, the only thing I had to go by was the telephone number, which had been recorded on my mobile phone. So I actually traced her in the end through the mobile phone number. And sure enough, she's got an appointment today or tomorrow, as it was yesterday. And um, so I didn't understand, but, but having said that, I could see that she'd been given an invoice, sent an invoice, but the invoice had been cancelled. So in fact, instead of uh, having paid an invoice and not having an appointment, it appeared that the opposite was the case, that the invoice had been cancelled and not paid, and uh, uh, but that she did have an appointment, which is, you know, equally problematic. So I got in touch with the receptionist and she said that because she couldn't pay online, they processed it as, a, as an individual transaction, and that, which is why her named invoice had been cancelled and she'd just been put through as an anonymous card payment. So at this point, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm thinking, okay, do I really want to get into this, you know? We've been stung in the past by patients whose uh, concept of reality, whose model of reality is, is severely n not, let's just say, not coincident with our own. And so, uh, there is a chance, there is a window, isn't there? There's a small window where if it comes to your attention that the patients uh, might fall into that category that you, you've got to just not accept them as patients. And here you've got to draw a line, you've got to draw a distinction between uh, accepting them for a checkup and accepting them for treatment because those two are two completely different things. I don't think, and obviously in this lady's mind, as you'll probably see if I put the correspondence up, um, that it's not, it's not, those things are the same. If she's accepted and given an appointment, then as far as she's concerned, she's accepted for treatment and she's a patient of mine. And, um, you know, then, <clears throat> so I wrote and said to her, I'm sorry, on this occasion, I don't think we can help you. I'll refund your money. So, and that was mainly because having said how rude it was to hang up on people and lecturing me about my PR, uh, she then hung up on me. And I thought that, we're not off to a good start there, are we? We're not, honestly, you know, that's not, if that's how well you get on when you start, you can imagine how well you get on if she has a bit of trouble following a root treatment or, um, 
doesn't like, you know, like a shade matching on a white felons or whatever. So, anyway, <clears throat> we do this very rarely and uh, we don't we don't do it without a lot of thought and we don't do it without a lot of guilt because you know we're constantly thinking oh that you know especially when they write in and apologize and say I'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry I was a bit rude I was very stressed and all that and we're like oh you know she's probably a really really nice person and we've really shat on her you know uh, by 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 just refusing to see her and that under other circumstances, everything would have gone completely fine. Um, we've had one of those recently, about two, three months ago. But, you know, there's once it's done, it's done. There's no turning back. There's no going back. You can't then suddenly say, all right, uh, I accept your explanation that you were just very stressed at the time. Um, and the problem this woman's got is that she then told me that she needed to see me because she's in severe pain and that she'd been waiting a, a month to be seen. So I, under my obligation, from my professional obligation, to make sure the patients don't stay in pain, um, referred her to uh, Dentaline, which is our local NHS emergency service, which is there for the relief of pain. And which opens at six o'clock in the evening, which is precisely about the time that I sent her the email. So I said, look, you know, pretty much you're in luck. You can you can go to the dental line service. And I gave her the number and everything. But then, then of course, you know, she's like, she then regretted saying that she was in pain because that would have meant that uh, going somewhere else. Whereas in fact, she then said no, this morning, or the middle of the night, really, I woke up to it this morning. She sent me, I think, a third long email saying that, uh, you know, in fact, she wasn't in pain, had pain, but she uh, just wanted her teeth to be examined. So by that time, she's the last person I, I'm going to take. You know what I mean? She's uh, self serving in her narrative, uh, conveniently omits large parts of her um, behaviour and um, is uh, her, her grip on reality is completely flexible and serves whatever purpose you know she's trying to <laughs> she's trying to swim in water where she's not she's not she's trying to navigate in an environment <clears throat> successfully where she's really at a disadvantage and we we do take that into account I mean I mean have you ever um, have you ever spoken to someone in the business and and you know said no I don't want to buy that or no thank you and and they've come up with some real snarky comment like you know well you know don't worry you're wasting your own time as well as mine and you think, oh, do you know, you, you sit there on the phone week after week, month after month, and you've learned a phrase from someone who sits next to you or opposite you, or you've thought of a phrase after all these months, all these months of rejection, of a real snarky phrase that you can just drop in, like a verbal hand grenade just before you hang up. And, <clears throat> and, you know we don't like doing that we don't we know that we can navigate these waters better than the patients can in fact it's in many ways it's it's, it's only because we are fortunate in able in, in being in having the experience of being able to uh, hello in being able to handle these situations and knowing knowing how they're going to go, knowing where they're going to go, that we can guide the patients in the way that we know they're going to go anyway, right? I wouldn't say that was an accident. Just stopped on the large shoulder. Anyway, uh, 
so so you know one of the things that we know that she doesn't is that there's a difference between being given an appointment and being accepted for treatment so we have to guide her gently towards the realization that an appointment is reversible and uh, uh, acceptance for treatment is not guaranteed or and even that we don't need to give a reason for not accepting someone we don't uh, we're not obliged to explain to her why we are not accepting her and in fact in many cases it's better if you don't you know what am I gonna say you can't say because I think you're a bit of a loony tune I can't say, I can't say, I mean you could say like, you know, there's a conflict of personalities or something. I don't suppose they could argue much about that. That one, one side of two people negotiating could feel that the personality, there was a personality conflict. Um, and then I think that was some of the, you know, you have to justify it to a third party. I would say probably that's how I would explain it. I would just say like, we didn't get along from the first second we spoke to each other. We were, we were very different people. She's, um, I wouldn't go so far as to call her a Karen because I think she's probably, again, you know, I mean, I, I'm so lovely. I'm so, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt because I never blame the person. I always blame the actions. And I think probably she is a lovely person normally, but when people are being not, not, given what they want they are the worst of them comes out doesn't it and certainly the worst of hers come out and her problem is that the, the worse she behaves the more she, outrageous she is in her claims and her you know she wants compensation now for uh, severe uh, I don't know distress or something now she I've offered to refund the money, of course, in full. And, um, but the problem is, because it was processed as an, uh, sort of essentially an anon anonymous payment for a checkup, which is quite a common amount, um, it's a bit difficult to identify which payment it is. We've narrowed it down to two. I have sent her an email and an SMS asking her to just uh, let us know the last four digits of her car so that we can distinguish between the two payments and make sure she gets a refund and in the meantime she's uh, the fact that she hasn't had a refund and doesn't and hasn't read the SMS and the email uh, thoroughly enough to know that <coughs> we will give her a refund as soon as she lets us know the, the numbers um, that that is the there's the steam pressure that's still keeping her complaint going because she's now she's now convinced that I've made her an appointment, cancelled it at a short notice, and um, and kept the money. Basically, I just want to refund the money, and then that will be the end of the matter as far as I'm concerned. I don't, as far as I know, she can't really, you know. I mean, should I sort of send her all the gump about making a complaint? No, I don't think I need to because she's not, um, she's never established as a patient of the practice. <coughs> she literally never had any treatment. So I don't know whether she's entitled to complain about the fact that um, she sort of, uh, we decided between her making, being given a checkup appointment and her coming in based on the phone call that I had with her personally that that I don't think she's um, a, a good fit for the practice. Um, and that's what it boils down to. I mean, that's that's why she's, she's so annoyed that she got the appointment and, and made the payment and then the appointment was canceled and can't work out why. And the answer is because in that time, that, that was the time during which her and I had the phone call. And the phone call and the phone call set all the alarm bells off. You know, if she's gonna start lecturing me about uh, how to run the business and 
you know, and, and, and obviously fails, fails on all the major um, tests, like not being able to pay online because her um, postcode was a problem which again you know indicates that there's a potential fraud risk there because what that means is that her credit card is not registered at her current address so she's given us her current address but the credit card doesn't match the current address and so you know all these little things with experience start to add up <coughs> plus the fact that she hung up on me you know, who hangs up on their dentist? <laughs> or their doctor, do you know what I mean? Really, you don't, you know, you don't behave like that. So, anyway. We're going to, uh, I'm going to ask, the way I'm going to deal with it, I'm just going to ask the receptionist, if we can identify, there's only two payments, we can identify, I can ring up the other patients and ask them what their credit card number is and then they'll tell us and then by process of elimination we'll be able to work out which, which her one is and then I'll refund that and then as far as I'm concerned the matter's, the matter's closed. And, uh, now you might say well uh, do you really want someone going around like a poison pill telling everybody what an asshole you are? and how badly they've been treated and how rude you were and everything like that well to be honest with you my, you know she's not really going to do much damage to my reputation or my patient base or my income um, whereas if uh, if she does come in and we get into some sort of contretemps then she is going to uh She's gonna keep me awake at night and you know, it's gonna be. And then the, <coughs> the first rule of dentistry is that the patients that, whose treatment you don't want to go wrong are the patients whose treatment goes wrong. So. <clears throat> and that's true whether it's friends or family or uh, patients who are uh, quite entitled about uh, their um, <clears throat> their right. So yeah, so all I would say is, look, just my gut feeling now, after forty years in practice, is if if I suspect at an early stage that someone's going to give problems, then I tend to terminate the relationship at a fairly early stage. And this goes on, I mean, this goes on to other things as well. For example, I had a, a lady in who had a partial upper chrome denture around three teeth, one of which was starting to get a bit loose, and a lower all on four. Uh, that was done two years ago by a dentist in Ashford. But asked me if she could come and see me and if she could get it, it needed to be removed and descaled and. <laughs> and um, and re, re replaced, you know, re screwed on, resealed, etc. And then also the the teeth on the denture were wearing, uh, which they were, you know, because I mean, let's face it, you know, the dentist has done such a good job. She's still got quite a strong bite, and I think um, the teeth, the denture teeth, were, were wearing a bit. And. Um, because I think what he's done is they've done. I think they put quite cheap teeth on the infrastructure, you know, on the on the superstructure, and on the denture. I don't think they're using very strong teeth at all. They're probably using the NHS teeth that were wearing quickly. And um, she wants to know if I could sort of save her the bother of travelling to Maidstone, which is, to be honest, is only about an hour away, um, and she doesn't want to do that. I mean, so, and, and, the, and the long and short of it is that the answer is yes, I could. I could take all that on, right? But the, the downside of it all far outweighs the upside. You know, to put it quite bluntly, this dentist in Maidstone has, has, has trousered 12 grand 
two years ago for this job and and I've got the job of um, maintaining it and repairing it remediating it you know which you know and I would argue that part of that 12 grand included the aftercare so my advice to her was initially that I would you know consider um, what we could do because we can we can certainly unscrew a all on four and descale it and stick it back on again so the point is that she's not going to want to pay the sort of money that implant patients need to pay to have subsequent work done and that's a big problem you know implant patients tend to assume it's like it's a one and done with their implants and then five years later they find that they've got another big expense because one of them's got loose or something's happened or they need a new bridge or whatever and, and, and so they've got ongoing four figure bills which they don't like. <coughs> That's when they start telling you that oh they were told it was going to last forever and blah 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 blah. Anyway so that's how to deal with a loony tune and I uh, hope you never have to but you will there'll be, a, there'll be about one every three months or so if you look for them if you look for them. All right lovely nice to talk to you bye.